good afternoon and welcome once again to Angel Orchids. Now today I'm just going to go through some uh, Phragmopediums for a change. I've done uh, quite a lot of the others so uh, I think it's about time we had a look at these. And I'll tell you how I keep them and I'll try and tell you where they come from and uh, what to do to keep them properly. Now Phragmopedium comes from the, uh, from the Greek where Phragma means division which I'm always taking, and uh, pedilum, which is uh, slipper. Uh, unlike the slipper, which comes from Asia and uh, beyond Asia, called Paphia pedilums, these come from the uh, northern and midland areas of South America and as far north as Mexico. Uh, they can be terrestrial, epiphytic, or uh, lithophytic, you know. But uh, having said that, I treat them all exactly the same, and I would advise anybody else to do the same. And unlike uh, Paphia pedlums, I won't consider uh, Phragmopedium to be much easier to cultivate. Now, the medium I keep them in uh, is bark, but there are quite a number of uh, substrates which, uh, which frags will easily accept and tolerate. Uh, you can grow them in, as I say, bark, lava rock, pebbles, rock wool, perlite, and all number of substances. Uh, I use bark with the addition of grow stones. Uh, that's if I still have, can get some, uh, and if not, I add some uh, large perlite, and that's not easy to get in the UK neither. The usual perlite we get here is tiny, about, oh, well, it says it's six millimetres, but it's more like two or three. Now, the Eric Young Foundation uses a material which is not what you can call rock wool. Uh, it is not in cube form like rock wool is, but it seems to be some kind of a loose material, almost like a wool, and they grow very, very well in that one. Now that's taking care of the medium. How about light? Well, frags aren't that, that fussy about light. Uh, they'll thrive with temperatures of between... Uh, say 21 centigrade which is about 70 Fahrenheit and 28 centigrade which is 81 Fahrenheit and with night temperatures I would imagine to be around uh, uh, 12 centigrade which is around about 55 Fahrenheit and 17 centigrade so it's a 62 Fahrenheit those temperatures will be ideal for them now watering, as you all know, my method of watering these is controversial. Uh, I water them probably three times a week with good, clean water. And uh, if you're watering, uh, or if you're keeping fragment pediums, uh, either watering or keeping them outside, You've got to make sure that the roots stay cool. They do not like warm roots. Now I say this because in the wild, Phragmopediums grow on cliffs with the water running down the cliffs on the roots all the time. They grow in streams, but the roots are always in water. And that water, I would presume, is never hot. So always keep the roots of your Phragmopediums cool. Now as far as feeding goes, well you all know I feed twice a year on a uh, slow release fertiliser. I use fish blood and bone but there is Osmocort and stuff like that which you could use. And I feed mine every November and every May. I just put a teaspoonful uh, around the uh, top of the medium and, uh, and water it in and that's all I give them for six months and they don't seem to be do so bad on it 
So uh, whatever you do, anyhow, that's the way I do it. Whatever you do and the growing must be right for you. Now I've gone through all the ins and outs of uh, how I keep them. I would like to show you just a few plants. Now this is a uh, Phragmopedium caudatum. And this is the one that grows uh, epiphytically in the wild. A lot of the times, not all the time, but they do grow epiphytically. Uh, but I treat them the way I treat all the others. They just get the same feed and they get uh, the same water and anything. You know, I wouldn't recommend you grow these uh, on mounts because they get far too large uh, and you be impossible to give them the uh, cultivation requirements that they need. Uh, this one I bought as a very very small just above a seedling size plant about uh, two years ago and uh, it hasn't grown very big. What it has done it was a single plant and now it's got three growths and they're all growing a new light loop a new leaf in the middle there, apart from this smaller one. So that's Cordatum. That gets water just as much as the others, but if you read about them, they'll probably tell you they don't need watering as much. But uh, as I said before, I give them all the same. That's Phragmopedium Cordatum. Absolutely beautiful. One of those things that they use for hybridising because the flowers and the petals on them uh, they're so long, you know, they can be a foot to 18 inches long and uh, much sought after, but these are quite difficult to grow. Well, this is uh, a Phragmopedium sedenii, much used in uh, hybridising things, but this plant was given to me sort of uh, 12 months ago, not in a very good state, and I've had to uh, chop half of it away because it had no roots on whatsoever. But now, this is part of the old plant here. You can tell it's just enough and it's a little bit loose so the roots won't be that good yet. But it's got a new growth here and a new growth here. So I'm hoping this will survive. There's a new leaf coming up in the middle. Now Sedenii uh, was, I think, hybridised. It must have been hybridised by John Seddon. John Snedden, who was a great uh, hybridizer of Phragmopediums and all kinds of flowers in the late uh, 19th and earlier 20th century. But, uh, and that is the uh, parent of many, many uh, plants, and one which I will show you now, which is a uh, Cardinale. And this one is in flower for the first time. There we are, get the camera right so you can see it. Well you can see it's in a deep pot but I'll work my way up and show you the plant itself. And it's only uh, two growths, one of which is dying off, but this is the first time it's flowered. Let's see if I can show it here nicely. Doesn't do it much good showing a white background, but we'll try and hone in on it. There we are. And where it shows red on the lip, it's actually a lot darker than that. With the beautiful pink petals on it and all sorts. And another couple of buds behind it, so I hope uh, I can get two buds out at the same time on this one. Right, should I leave it under while I talk about it? I think so. Oops. Should I leave it under while I talk about it? Yeah, let's do that. Well, this is one of the plants I really like. Uh, and I've always liked Cardinale because they look so precise and neat. And they've got a beautiful deep red it looks light on the camera but uh, looking at it in real life it's deep red and the uh, petals on the side are more pink 
than they are white but the dorsal is white and you can just see one of the buds sticking out over the top now to me it's a beautiful hybrid it's made from said and I which I've just shown you and uh, Schlimmy Eye, which is also in the makeup of Said and I. So it's a real mixture this of Said and I, uh, Longifolium, uh, Schlimmy Eye, and back to Said uh, and I. Uh, and this is what you've got. And I don't think you can get much better than that. Other than the, uh, if you like, the very long petal varieties. Right, the next one I want to show you is a Grandi. which is also a uh, hybrid of Chordatum, which is the uh, epiphyte that I showed you, and Longifolium. Well, here's one of my grandies, which I've had for many, many years, and as I said, it's a cross between Chordatum and Longifolium. Uh, a real mixture, these plants are, and I've had this one years. Uh, these are divisions of the one that I had sort of 12, 15 years ago and uh, I've still got a few plants of them left and uh, I've decided now I am not going to split them anymore. I'm just going to let them grow. This one had uh, two spikes on it last year. I think it was two and not three. Yeah, I think it was two. And it bloomed for at least two to three months. Kept uh, dropping flowers and growing fresh ones, dropping flowers and growing fresh ones. So they're a beautiful plant to get. Phragmopedium grandi. Now this is another small plant, it, uh, but it's got three growths. You can see the three growths there. And this is, and I'll put it up because it's a, a mister who... Uh, remember how to spell it, Warsawixianum and this is, well it got mixed up now and I think they're all called Humboldtii I think because it got mixed up with Wallaceae and, and uh, Popoi and all sorts like that but uh, this name is uh, Warsawixianum but it could be anything when it flowers and these are the, the ones with very very long uh, sepals. You know you've got to stand them up on something high because the uh, sepals grow longer than the pot they're standing in. And uh, I'd love to flower this one. I've had this one about uh, ooh, six months, seven months, but uh, it's not showing any signs of growth yet, but I suppose it's just settling in at this time of year. Well I think we'll finish up by having a look at one or two Kavakia hybrids and this is a nice plant, this is the uh, Fritz Schomburg. Really nice plant this one. Flowered and the flowers just dropped off today. There it is. You can see the size of it. Phragmopedium Fritz Schomburg. A cross between Kavakia and Bessei. Lovely plants. And then we've got this one that I've shown you many times before, the Gavakii cross. This Gavakii cross Sargentianum and this blooms and blooms forever. Look at those on top there. There's at least another three there. Phragmopedium Las Verinus, this is called. Now this isn't a uh, Kavakia hybrid, this is the uh, Richrai species and this has been flowering for nearly four months and it's not finished yet. There's a flower there and there's another bud here. So that's going to flower for at least another month, so that's going to be four or five months for this one flowering. Phragmopedium Richteri. This is a little uh, cross between uh, Kovacii 
and Bessai, and then back to Bessai, which gives you uh, Fragmapedium Robert Yanqueni. You can see the difference in size between that and the uh, and the Fritz Schomburg. If you cross, put a Bessai back into Fritz Schomburg, you get a much smaller plant. Beautiful plants as well, beautiful blooms. Well that's about all for now, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, I've got plenty more uh, Fragmapediums, but uh, you don't want to look at any more, I'm sure. There they are. And then there's the ones that which go up right to the top. Far too big. So thanks again for watching. Thank you to all my subscribers. I hope you enjoy this video. And until next time, I'll see you later.